probability distribution. So the first thing we need to define is a random variable. A random variable represents a numerical value associated with each outcome of a probability distribution. This is our variable x. We use this one a lot to describe our variables. So there's a couple different ways we could define it. So for x, we could say it could represent the number of sales calls a salesperson makes in a day. We could also say that x would represent the hours spent on sales calls in one day. X could represent a lot of different things, but everything that it can represent can kind of be divided into two different categories. The first one would be discrete. So a discrete random variable has a finite or countable number of possible outcomes. So you should be able to list the outcomes. So for the number of sales calls, you could count them. One call, two calls, three calls, or perhaps you're counting the pairs of shoes in your closet. One pair, two pair, three pair, that would be discrete. The other one is continuous. Continuous is things that are uncountable number of possible outcomes. So oftentimes these are things that are on a number line where you're having interval pieces, so decimal values in between each one of those whole numbers. So the example was the hours spent on a sales call. Hours could be split down into minutes, into seconds, into milliseconds. There's so many smaller portions of an hour that it's continuous. There's lots of things going on. So it's not exactly one hour or exactly two hours on a phone. There's lots of pieces in between. So continuous tends to be things that are um, measurements. So volumes, lengths, time, money, those things tend to be continuous. So here's a couple examples just to determine whether it is discrete or continuous. So number one, let X represent the number of Fortune 500 companies that lost money in the previous year. So in this case, we are counting the number of companies. So one company, two company, three, this would be discrete. Number two, let X represent the volume of gasoline in a 21 gallon tank. Now, ideally, if you filled it up and it's exactly 21 gallons, and we know what's in there. Maybe you didn't fill it up quite all the way or you've driven a little bit here and there. So anytime it's a volume, that kind of measurement, this is going to be continuous. So this specific PowerPoint is based on the discrete probability distribution. We just needed that background knowledge to understand the difference between discrete and continuous before we dived into probability distribution. So technically the title is discrete probability distribution, but typically we just say probability distribution. So this lists each possible value that a random variable can be together with its probability. So it's got to meet two different criteria. One, all of the probabilities have to be between zero and one. So it has to be positive. It could be any decimal value in between, and it can include those endpoints. So you could have a probability of zero, you could have a probability of one, but it has to be within that range. And then when you add up all of your probabilities, they always have to add up to one. As long as you've met both of those criteria, you can have a probability distribution. Once you have a probability distribution, we could graph with it, we could make some inferential statements from it, but in order to make one, you start with a frequency distribution for possible outcomes. You find the sum of those frequencies, so that would be your sample size, n. Then to find the probability of the possible outcome, you are dividing the frequency by the sum of frequencies. And so we abbreviate that as F divided by N. So each individual frequency divided by the total, this would represent your probability. So P of X is equal to that F over N, and you would check to make sure each one is between zero and one. Again, it could be both zero or one as well, and that all of them would add up to one. 
So we're going to make our first graph. So this one says an industrial psychologist administered a personality inventory test for passive aggressive traits to 150 employees. Each individual was given a whole number score from one to five, where one is extremely passive and five is extremely aggressive. A score of three indicated neither trait. The results are shown. Construct a probability distribution for the random variable X. Then graph the distribution using a histogram. So here's the same table, just a little bit more space to write. We have our X, we have our frequencies. So we need to add up our frequencies in order to find our N, our sample size. Now conveniently, it said it in the paragraph for us, when we add them all up, we get 150. Sometimes it might be in the scenario from reading the paragraph, sometimes you might actually have to do it. So in this case, if you added up that column, you get 150. Now to make the probability distribution chart, it would consist of both your X's, I'm just copying those over, and then to find the probabilities, you are again doing F over N. So take each F divided by the N and then fill it in the chart. So 24 divided by 150 gives us 0.16. Then we could do 33 divided by 150 to get 0.22. And we repeat this going down the column. So each frequency divided by 150. I'm doing two decimals on each right now just because that's what our calculator is giving us. If they give you a bunch of different decimals, I always recommend rounding off to four decimals. And once we've filled in our chart, we can check it. Check that when you add them all up, they add up to one. And check that each one of those rows is somewhere between zero and one. And there you have it. That is our probability distribution chart right there. Now it also mentioned making a histogram. This doesn't have to be fancy. It's just to kind of quickly show you what you can do with something like this. So once you have this information, we can put the scores across the bottom. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then on the left-hand side of a histogram here, we're gonna put the probabilities. So notice the probabilities, the highest one is a 0 0.28. So I'm gonna count these by 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And I'm just making quick little sketches here. So this is for a score of one, it's approximately at that 0.16. For a score of two, it's approximately there at 0.22. Again, I'm just eyeballing this just so you kind of get the gist of it. And 14. So there, once you make a quick little sketch, you could answer questions like, what is the shape of the graph? What is the center of the graph? And so forth. So here's a couple problems just verifying if something is a probability distribution or not. So keep in mind, you're checking, are all of my probabilities between 0 and 1 inclusively? And do my probabilities add up to 1? So this is between 0 and 1. This one's between 0 and 1. This one's between 0 and 1. And this one's between 0 and 1. So we met the first uh, condition. Now I'm just throwing plus signs in there. If you add up those four numbers, you get 1 which is exactly what we want. So this one is a probability distribution. Check mark. Let's try it again. This one says we've got 0.28, that's between zero and one, 0.21, that's between zero and one, 0.43 and 0.15, all of them are within the range of zero to one. So we've met that criteria. Now let's add them up, putting little plus signs in between, add all four of those numbers up, and it's too big. You should get 1.07. So this is not a probability distribution.
Determine whether each distribution is a probability distribution. This one is fractions, still fine. One half is between zero and one. One fourth is between zero and one. Five fourths is not between zero and one, and neither is negative one. Both of those are not in the correct range, so we're done right here. This is not a probability distribution. So the next thing we need to find is the mean. So in order to find the mean, you're going to take each one of your x's times its probability, so each one of those pairs multiplied together, and then you add them all up. So here's our first example. The probability distribution for the personality inventory test for passive aggressive traits is given. Find the mean score. So again, I'll jot that on here. It was sigma x times p of x. So when I have this written out in front of me, I like to kind of just do it right next to the chart. So 1 times 0.16 gives me 0.16. 2 times 0.22 gives me 0.44. 3 times 0.28 gives me 0.84. 4 times 0.20 gives me 0.8. And 5 times 0.14 gives me 0.7. So I've done each one of the x times probabilities. Now I'm going to add them up. And I get 2.94. That's the mean. Now sometimes that throws people off because we're so used to dividing by something at the end. But there's no divide on this one. Just x times p and add them up. That is our mean. So the next thing we have to find is the variance and then the standard deviation. So I'll pop up both right next to each other. You'll notice the connection between variance and standard deviation is always the same. Once you find variance, you just square root it to find the standard deviation. So if you look within the formula itself, you start in here with your x column, and you're going to take each one of your x's minus the mean. So we're going to do this with our calculator. Then you're going to square that answer. Once you square it, then you're going to multiply that column by the probabilities. Then you're going to add them all up. That would be your variance. And when you throw in the square root, then you've got your standard deviation. So here's that same example. So we've got our scores. We now have our probabilities. So the first thing we need to do is find those deviations. So since we have the mean of 2.94, we're going to take each one of our x's, so 1 minus 2.94, and we get negative 1.94. Then we've got 2 minus our mean, 3 minus the mean, 4 minus the mean, and 5 minus the mean. Once we have our deviations, now we square them. I'm going to add the column over here. There it is. I've got them already in there for you. We square each one. Once you have them all squared, so that's this right here, all the squared numbers, then we have to take each one of those numbers times that probability. And there are numbers right here. Once we have done that step, then we need to add them up. So here's where we're adding them up either by hand or using that one of our stats in your calculator. When you do add them up, you get 1.6164. So that is your variance. And if you take the square root of that number, then you get 1.2714. This is your standard deviation. Now the last thing we have for this section is another vocab term here. 
It's called the expected value. So if you want to find the expected value, it happens to be the same thing as your mean. But what it is introducing is a new variable. So if you see a capital E, it means expected value, which for us happens to be the exact same thing as the mean. So here's our example. At a raffle, 1,500 tickets are sold at $2 each for four prizes of 500, 250, 150, and 75. You buy one ticket, find the expected value, and interpret its meaning. So we need to make our chart. We need to know the mean. We need to know the probability for each. So for our x value, we need to know what we are expecting here. What are we gaining? So if we walked up, bought a ticket, and won the prize of $500, how much do we walk away with? Do we walk away with 500? Or do we walk away with 498? You subtract out the cost of the ticket. And that would be the same for the next one. If we won the 250, we're actually walking away with 248 because we're subtracting the cost of the ticket. So each one of our prizes, less $2. But there's one more. What if you don't win? So the last prize, in essence, would be $0. And then you have to take out your $2 ticket price. It's actually a negative 2. So now we have to find the probability. Remember, probability is frequency over sample size. Sample size is 1,500 tickets. We know n, and frequency is how many we have of each. So we only have one prize of each of those dollar amounts. So one over 1,500 for each of the four dollar prizes. Now, if you had 1,500 tickets and four of them win something, 1,500 minus the four winners gives you 1,469. That's how many people are going to walk away and not win. Keep in mind that probability column should add up to exactly one. So you can check the math on that one. And now that we have them, we have our entire probability distribution to find expected value. We need to multiply across for each one of these. And then once we have those numbers, we add them up. That's going to be our mean. So I'm reaching for my calculator. Again, if you get a lot of decimals, I always recommend at least rounding to four. Don't forget the negative on that last one. And then we add them up. Again, don't forget the minus there for that last one. And we get negative 1.35. So what that means is that's in money. You are expected to walk away losing, because it's negative, $1.35 per ticket you buy.